Sally met Harry at a networking event, and Harry made a very good first impression. But don't they all? Sally had, was new to town. She had taken a job as marketing communications director at an international firm. Her first month or two were very manic and very busy. And at one point, she knew she had to get out there and meet people in the community. So she showed up at the networking event a little bit late, and everyone was already talking, and her nerves were up a little bit. So she bought some time by hanging up her coat. Then she went to the bar and got a glass of Chardonnay, and when she turned around, there she was, alone in a room full of people already engaged in speaking. Harry spotted her, and he invited her into his group, and he introduced her to everybody, and they started a conversation. Very good conversation about 10 minutes or so, at which point Harry invited another person into the group and introduced her to Sally. And then he moved on to another group and started circulating. Sally kept her eye on Harry throughout the evening, and she was, in fact, hoping that Harry would circle back before the end of the evening. And sure enough, as the crowd started thinning out, Harry came back to her, and he said, you know, I've been thinking about something we were talking about. What do you think about a cup of coffee near your office on Thursday afternoon? And Sally said, what about a glass of wine in town Thursday evening? <laughs> well, the wine date went very well. And in fact, when it was over, they were on the sidewalk in front of the restaurant. And the last thing that happened was Sally touched Harry's elbow and said, I've got a really good feeling about this. And she dashed off to catch her train out to the suburbs to her husband and kids. <laughs> no, this was not the beginning of a romantic affair. This was the beginning of a sale. And Harry had done everything right. Harry was selling with love already. The primary fundamentals of a sale is trust. And he built it by sparking interest and then engaging Sally in something that she felt that she needed. Love in business is not a new concept. Kevin Roberts, CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi Worldwide, wrote a book called Love Marks. And in it, he said, when a brand is so powerful that it creates an emotional connection in our hearts, that is a love mark. Apple is a love mark for many people. The users of Apple not only love the brand, they spread the love. In fact, some people actually don't like Apple, but that's OK by Apple. Just look at their sales and look at their brand strength. Getting people to love you is not a dishonest objective in business. To fall in love with me. The problem is when you pick me up, you wine me, you dine me, and you sleep with me, will you call me afterwards? In sales, it's even more face-to-face. -face. It's even more interpersonal than brand resonance in people's heart. It's behavioral. It's mano a mano. It's face-to-face. -face. And customers know you want to get them to love you. But what they really want is for you to love them, because love is part of building trust. And trust is the biggest element in a sale. The idea for a sale is a love affair actually happened in a sales training workshop that I was leading. And it's a trainer's goal not just to bring new skills to your participants, but to embed them so that they use them afterwards. One of that concept is to make it memorable so that they use it immediately after. So in the workshop, very senior salespeople, and we were trying to build the concept of you are the trusted advisor. And we were working on an exercise of what do you do when the client starts to stall, when they're not communicating clearly? What do you do? And the solution that the participants came to was you need to probe. You need to ask those difficult questions. I'm sensing something's not working here. Is there something that I should know 
that I can help you? Are you facing any obstacles internally? What do I need to know to help you? Now, my mom said I should have gone to theater school and I should have been an actor, okay? Because I always go into these one-act plays. And in the workshop, I then put on my best American accent and I said, well, it's like love. You're not talking to me, honey. We're not communicating, baby. I got to know, is something wrong? Talk to me, baby. Tell me what's going on. And that got a good laugh with the crowd. And what happened was it actually morphed into our joke for the rest of the two-day workshop. We always came back to the link between love, finding love, and finding clients, and keeping love and customer service. It was to the point that the women in the group also liked it, and one woman salesperson actually at one point said when we were talking about closing the deal, she said, hey, I don't have patience for that. I say, baby, we've danced, we've had drinks, you coming back to my place or not? <laughs> okay. So it was catching. It was, and after that, the idea stuck with me, and I couldn't get it out of my head. Now, conversely, sales tools actually work in romance. And some people say, oh, that's crass. That's so commercial. Using sales skills to find romance? To which I say, what is so crass about sparking interest, asking questions, listening, solving problems together? Well, that's what good salespeople do. And it's my belief that that's what good partners do as well. And it actually happened, the book idea actually happened in a period in my life of which I had divorced, and yes, I was out there in the dating market. But it's not just about me, because there is a lot of people divorcing, and there are a lot of people out in the dating market, and we're kind of like, especially at my age, we're one big coaching family. Coach and be coached. And what I was finding was that all of these things actually work in romance, too. The parallel between finding love is similar to a complex sale. And we know how complex relationships are. And keeping love is like customer service. Now, at my age and before, about 10 years ago, men hit the wall at some point. And they go, oh my god, whether they lose a job, they lose a family member, something sparks in them that they say, what is my life purpose? What am I doing here? Where am I going? Women tend to make these little corrections as they go. Men have this thing called midlife crisis that we don't like to talk about it. And it's kind of like my mom's and dad's generation, midlife crisis. So if anybody talks to me about the break, at the break about midlife crisis, no, please don't, OK? <laughs> right. okay. But it is something that does happen to all of us. And about 10 years ago, I hit that wall. And I did a lot of searching. And I got into a lot of spirituality and Eastern philosophy and things. And one of the first concepts when you're doing spirituality is working on yourself. It's not about just meditating and saying, wow, good feeling. It's about there are some things that I need to work on. Forgiveness of myself before I can really learn how to forgive others. Self-love. And the heart feeds itself first in a healthy relationship. The heart not only distributes blood to the rest of the body, it needs blood. It's a muscle, it's an organ that needs blood. The brain doesn't mind that the heart takes its commission up front. Because if the, if the heart had to wait 120 days for the invoice to get paid, Everything would die, and the brain knows that, the liver knows that, the muscles know that. The heart feeds itself first. So in a healthy relationship, take care of yourself. I work with a lot of people who say, especially entrepreneurs and startups, I'm uncomfortable taking money off of people, but they want to make their business run. In all of this coaching of love and romance, people say, you know, I just feel like I'm a pervert, I, I, but I want a relationship. Yeah, I want sex, but I want it wrapped up in a human relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. You're whole. You're good. 
There's nothing wrong with trying to build business partnerships in which both parties add value to each other. Yes, you need money to run your new company, but you're a partner in a business relationship. You're bringing value. Help that customer find that. You're good. You're whole. Be in love with yourself. It's okay. Clients respect that as much as romantic partners. The New York Times had an article about 10 years ago, about five years ago, called The Me Marriage is the Happy Marriage. Strong partnerships require strong partners. Baby, I love you. And one of the things I love about you is that you let me be me. That is a strong relationship. That is not a toxic relationship. And from that comes trust. Love builds trust. Shakespeare was on to something. And I think if he was a marketing director today, it would be called your unique selling point, your USP, your competitive advantage. David Data is a writer of masculinity and spirituality and sex and relationships. David Data writes things about how to be whole with yourself and how to live happily in a partnership and get the things that you need. One of the takeaways that I get from David Data's writings is your mission is important. Your purpose in life is important. Your relationship should support that, not get in the way of that. Because if it, is, if it does, you will regret it later, and the relationship will become toxic. Clients feel the same way. Now, back in the times when sailors would go off to sea, and the town would come down to the harbor, and the women would be saying, don't go, don't go, you may die in the ocean and perish. Those sailors who said, I have to defend the homeland, or I have to trade economically to bring business to our community, it's my mission, I have to go. They knew that they may die at war. They may crash in a storm. They may get drunk and puke overboard and fall into the water. But those that came home, were loved by the community and by their women. And those who stayed were peeling potatoes. <laughs> to thine own self be true, and it shall follow as the light follow the darkness, that thou shall not be false to any other. Now, early in a sale, it's incumbent to take my breath away. It's very emotional. Early in a sale, emotions sell. After that, things get complicated, and things get more rational. But early in the sale, there needs to be something for me to go, wow, I think we need these people. Wow. And it's like a love affair. Early in a sale, emotions are only provoked through simplicity. Lion walks out of the brush and looks at you and says, lunch. You know you've got a problem. You're not thinking, should we refinance the house? You've got one thing, and that's very compelling. In a sale, as rational as business can be, in a sale, go for something that's going to inspire them. Simplicity. You might lose it later in the deal, but if you don't grab them early, you're not going to progress anyway. It's like a relationship. Take my breath away. There was something about the way she looked at me at the school concert, and then I learned she was divorced. <gasps> Take my breath away. You're opening a relationship. You're not closing a sale. Who has loved who has not loved at first sight? Shakespeare, again. Now, the purpose of opening is to get that emotional connection, but then to earn the right to ask questions. Asking good questions and listening is one of the most underrated trust builders. At different stages of the sale, there may be different questions you should ask. But listening builds trust. Well, how do you do it? By asking good questions, prompting for the concerns, handling the objections, and building solutions together. They say in relationships that women need to be listened to. Men need to feel important. And in business, everyone wants to be understood. Listening 
is the most underrated skill. Now, closing a deal is easy if everything has gone well. I was once working with a London media firm, and early on in our assignment, we were briefing, being briefed by the CEO and the CMO, the chief marketing officer. And you could feel the testosterone in the room, as they said, and they lowered their voice. And they said, we need closers. Our salespeople need to close. And when we started talking to the salespeople, we went back to the CEO and CMO two weeks later and said, your people are, sale, are, are closers. They know how to ask for the deal. The problem is things happening earlier in the deal are not satisfactory. And by asking and pushing too hard for the deal, pushiness kills trust. The buyer wants to feel in control too. And by you saying, do you want it in green or do you want it in red, how many should we put in if they're not ready for it? It's not going to happen. I will never forget my closing line that was yin yang. My most memorable close that I ever did in a sale was this. That was it. The buyer was showing all of the signals. You could see the wheels turning. The body language and all the signals were, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything more I could say to get that person to, to buy. And she looked at me, up at me and she said, Jack, let's do this. I imagine you're going to send me a contract as a next step. Now, if any of you have seen the movie Hitch, the love doctor, in which Will Smith is coaching some pretty pathetic guys when it comes to handling relationships. At one point he says, you don't ask a woman if you can kiss her, just kiss her. And the guy said, really? Is that all it is? And he goes, well, it's a little more subtle than that. <laughs> Move 90% of the way. Put yourself in a position to be kissed, but let her lean 10% into it because she wants to feel in control, too. The best salespeople in any industry are loved by their clients. They have self-love. They have confidence. They give love. They ask good questions. They listen. And they build solutions together. Doesn't that work in romance, too? It's all about trust. And it's all about understanding. Harry did everything right that evening. He did everything right at the wine bar. And he actually did everything right when Sally introduced him to his managers. He also found love this way. We know that the more you give, the more you get. In romance and in sales. Poets have written about it. Songwriters sing about it. Artists of all type. This is the human condition. Love conquers all.